Let's talk about buoyancy, how objects float or sink, and how we can figure out if something will float or sink in different fluids based on its density. Buoyancy is the upward force that a fluid, like water or air, exerts on an object placed in it. Whether an object floats or sinks depends on two key factors, the density of the object and the density of the fluid. Density, as you might remember, is how much mass is packed into a certain volume. If an object is less dense than the fluid it's in, it will float. If it's more dense, it will sink. Here's how it works. If you drop an object into water, the water pushes back with an upward force. This is the buoyant force. If the object is less dense than water, meaning it has less mass in the same amount of space, this buoyant force will be strong enough to make the object float. But if the object is denser than water, gravity will pull it down and the object will sink. Now let's look at a few examples to see how this works in different fluids. Water is a common fluid and its density is about one gram per cubic centimeter. If you take a block of wood that has a density of 0.6 grams per cubic centimeter, it will float because wood is less dense than water. But if you take a metal object, like a piece of steel, with a density of 7.8 grams per cubic centimeter, it will sink because steel is much denser than water. But buoyancy isn't just about water. It works in all fluids. Let's compare water to oil, which has a lower density, around 0.9 grams per cubic centimeter. If you take that same block of wood with a density of 0.6 grams per cubic centimeter and place it in oil, it will still float because the wood is less dense than the oil. But if you put something like a rubber ball with a density of 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter in the oil, it will sink because it's denser than the oil. Now, imagine we place that rubber ball in a denser fluid like salt water. Salt water is denser than fresh water with a density of around 1.03 grams per cubic centimeter, depending on how much salt is dissolved in it. In salt water, the rubber ball might float because salt water is denser than the ball. This is why it's easier to float in the ocean than in a swimming pool. Salt water's higher density makes it more buoyant. So, how do we determine the buoyancy of an object given its density? The basic rule is, if the object's density is lower than the fluid's density, it will float. And if the object's density is higher than the fluid's density, it will sink. To calculate whether an object will float or sink, we compare the two densities. For example, if you have an object with a density of 0.5 grams per cubic centimeter, and you put it in a fluid with a density of 1 gram per cubic centimeter, it will float because the object is less dense than the fluid. But if the object's density is 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter, and the fluid's density is 0.9 grams per cubic centimeter, the object will sink. Let's sum it up. Buoyancy is all about density. If an object is less dense than the fluid it's in, it will float. And if it's more dense, it will sink. By knowing the densities of both the object and the fluid, we can predict whether something will float or sink. Whether it's water, oil, or salt water, the relationship between the object's density and the fluid's density determines buoyancy. That's it for today's lesson. Next time you drop something into a liquid, think about its density and the density of the fluid. It's all about balance in the world of buoyancy.